uh, around the U.S. at least. I'm not sure about uh, other areas. So it's a deep concern, especially in Arizona, where they've had some historic um, uh, fires this, this summer. And I've spoken to uh, former Senator Karen Johnson from Arizona about this uh, specifically. So um, it's something that, that she's been addressing with the media, talking about geoengineering and contamination uh, of aluminum um, and being a catalyst uh, to these fires. So, yeah, there are a number and we could go, go on probably for four to five days about the risks and, and about uh, the damage that these programs are doing. So it's, you, you know, I believe wholeheartedly that because these programs allow individuals to have godlike power, they consolidate power, they're very important to them. Um, I believe any time you needle with something like that, you have something that's very destructive. As a result, I believe that these programs are the biggest threat that, he, that us as humans have ever had to face uh, on the planet. Um, we're looking at uh, a com complete corporatization of our weather. Um, we're looking at corporatization of our food. I don't want man controlling our weather. I don't want man or woman. Um, people, I think it's a better way to say it, I don't want people uh, controlling natural systems. I want them the way that God had created. And that's really the only way that it's going to work. So these people think, they think they have a handle on this, but uh, they're, they're not, uh, people are waking up to it, and uh, um, it's a beautiful thing to see people getting active. And uh, I believe we, we have a good fighting chance at, at stopping these programs. Well, I do what I do. Okay, Michael, we have a question coming out of, of chat, and we had discussed just briefly about the fact that um, that these chemicals being sprayed up there can accelerate certain frequencies, you know, that they're trying to utilize. And he, the question is, is if you can um, talk about or if you know anything about the harmful frequencies. Uh, you know, I haven't studied too much about that. It's believed that that harp can... Uh, emit different frequencies, and I know there's there's a lot of depth in frequencies and, and how it can control and manipulate different things, but I haven't studied too much about that, um, but I think it merits uh, more investigation. That's something that I would like to, to look into and uh, get more educated on. Right. You know, I mean, there's so much to, to investigate, isn't there? <laughs> Michael, um, can I just ask you, this, this question came from uh, one of the Contrail members. Um, they, they were wondering how this has affected your life on a personal level. I mean, I know that we have all taken hits in one way or another, you know, from our family and friends regarding our belief system. So, so has this affected you and did that, you know, have any, any effect on, on how you ended up approaching the issue? Well, you know, it certainly has, and, and I think it's uh, it's primarily positive. Um, God, I've met some incredible people that I would not have met and developed some great friendships um, with, without this issue um, being together. So I've joined forces. I've learned some some wonderful things from some great teachers. And uh, for the film, we had a lot of great advisors, you know, uh, Dane Wigginton and and uh, Rose and Dave up, up north, and, uh, you know, uh, Morrow with Geoengineering Watch, and I could go on and on, Deborah Whitman, and uh, just so many wonderful people that have come into my life. Um, so on a positive note, it's, it's just been incredible. Uh, it has been very taxing since the release of the film. I was not prepared uh, to deal with the capacity um, and the response of the film, which, which was immense. I mean, millions of people have seen the film. A lot of people have questions. We've been promoting so it's been a little challenging uh, in that capacity. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, I know certain people in the past have had challenges um, addressing this with, with relatives and, and, and loved ones, and they've been called kooks. But I think now we're in a new age, and, and very rarely um, do I hear about that. Um, and, and I think that the reason is the film's been very instrumental in putting this into uh I guess it's a, a scientific way that reaches out to the mass public, but uh, also I think spiritually things are changing as well, and people are starting to question things, and and uh, they're starting to wonder. So I think uh, I think that we've had and seen a lot of progress with that, but uh, 
this issue, you know, it's uh, again, it's deeply concerning. It, it affects uh, every person that I love. Um, it affects every person and every animal uh, on the planet. So it's something that, that I plan on continuing to address. It's been, again, a little tiring in, in that capacity. So there are some challenges with it. But, uh, uh, again, we're making progress and uh, incredible progress, and that's really, really what keeps me going. Indeed. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that with us, Michael. I know that a lot of people that have just stumbled across this issue are feeling very, very alone. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot of cross help. There's a lot of fear out there. Um, so I think we have a responsibility to um, keep our feet firmly in the ground and uh, just get out get out the facts as, as we can find them. And, and your wonderful film, What in the World Are They Spraying, has certainly assisted us. On, on the ground to do that um, we can't thank you enough Michael look I have another question here uh, from the chat room from uh, Bill um, manganese de bromo de fluorobenzidine salt is making the sky darker blue why when we can see the chemtrail anyway what's the purpose for this now on that manganese is also a nasty nasty uh, chemical that you know, there's a manganese factory in Australia that, um, that in the area that that is in has the highest rate of violence in Australia, but, um, you know, from the people working in and around that. Do you know anything about that, Michael? You know, I really don't. Um, <laughs> so, again, that's another area that, that I'm going to have to investigate. Hopefully, in another film, um, we can cover that and and dig a little bit deeper, but uh, perhaps uh, if somebody finds out, please email me, and you can go to my website, truthmediaproductions.us, to uh, to email. I know that we're running short on time. Unfortunately, I was unable to uh, schedule two hours for, for the show. Um, my apologies for that. Oh, look, no, we are so very grateful. We've got Andrew Bridgman coming on in a few minutes uh, anyway, Michael, and... Um, you know, Deborah Whitman has agreed to join us too in a couple of weeks, so we're very excited about that. Um, um, our heart out to you. Thank you for everything you're doing. You're certainly leading the charge, and um, we're, we're very, very grateful that you've uh, given us an hour um, of your time yeah. today. Well, thank you very much. You there, Joy? Yes, I'm sorry I had my mic muted. I was talking and I just realized I'm sorry. Yes, Michael, I really want to thank you. I know you've put a lot of hard work into your film and all your research. And, you know, I just want to ask one real quick question before we let you go. Um, are you going to be doing a follow-up documentary film? And, and if so, are we going to be addressing um, things maybe like HARP and, and maybe some of the other things that you didn't have time to address in the first one? That's interesting. It seems like I'm getting the calling to do that. So I'm right. thinking about perhaps why in the world are they spraying where, where I can get in uh, a little bit deeper. And I think it's important. So uh, just uh, I could use your prayers. And uh, as soon as I really feel led to do it, I'm going to move forward uh, with it. And, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, try and obtain some funding and see if we can make it happen. Excellent. Well, we thank you so much time, or thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. And um, we'll certainly get, get in behind your efforts to fund your next film, Michael. We loved the way you did it last time, and uh, we'll all be on board again. There's a bigger crew this year, so um, we're really looking forward to that one. Well, thanks for having me on. And uh, again, uh, if anybody's interested in purchasing the film, truthmediaproductions.us and uh, would help support our efforts and then also make you into an activist. So we have uh, <laughs> activism shirts available as well, which have been really effective because they just say, uh, what in the world are they spraying? So people actually will come up to you, they'll say, what are they spraying? And they'll say, well, you know, I'm glad that you asked because, um, you know, so it opens up an opportunity. People will come up to you. So we have those Maybe available then. as well. And those links are going back into the chat room. Oh, so on that note, Michael, thank you very, very much. And, um, you know, onward and upward. Keep your eyes to the sky. Thank you very much.
Okay, guys, um, we're going to bring uh, Andrew um, Bridgman on now. Andrew has been uh, instrumental in um, chemtrail awareness. Um, so uh, as soon as we can contact him, uh, he will be in here with us. Um, Joy, are you still there now? Yeah, my dog started barking, so I had to <laughs> mute my mic. Sorry, I, I have to do the show in the same okay, room do, with my dog. So, <laughs> Do you have anybody else calling in? We have Andrew that's supposed to be calling in. Okay, yeah, he, he'll seven, be here with us. In a, that might be him there now, I think. 760? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hey, good day, Andrew. Hey, good day to you. Hello, Andrew. Uh, Hi, Joy. <laughs> All right, um, Andrew, well, we're going to continue on um, just with, you know, perhaps you can, you can jump in here and um, cover some issues um, for us. It was, it was great to have Michael on, and thank you for being instrumental in making that happen. We, we, we're totally thrilled. I mean, Michael was certainly what um, motivated me to get going and uh, he gave us the tools to do it but I know that you've been working really really hard anyway a lot of the people here know you uh, they know you as associated with um, Southern California Skywatch um, and and now you've broken out and, and you're doing a lot a lot of your own uh, stuff Andrew are you there to share that with us um, you're sort of well, sticking sure out of the yeah, surely. Uh, yeah, Michael uh, has been a great friend. I, I um, <clears throat> got involved with what was going on with the atmosphere in the fall of 2009 um, by chance, just looking up the sky and saw planes rolling over and started doing some investigation. And then I couldn't find any answers to my question because it was kind of a relatively a new phenomenon on a large scale. We know it's been going on now by doing research for, for considerable time as far back as, you know, as far as the aluminum part we found in, in about 1980, somewhere in there. But we can even go back further in history. But the ramped up part in the fall of 2009 took me by surprise and I started diving in and trying to find the answer. And I um, befriended uh, Rosalind uh, Peterson from California Skywatch that also has Agricultural Defense Coalition. And she actually kind of helped organize a lot of people to go down to San Diego at the AAS, the American Association of Advancement of Science uh, Conference in San Diego. It's a large conference on a broad spectrum of science. But there was a particular um, uh, symposium on can, geo can geoengineering save us from global warming. And so she had organized uh, Deborah Whitman, um, Dane Wigington, Mara Oliveira from uh, geoengineeringwatch.org, and several other people. And I was able to to not get into the symposium, but I did shoot some video outside, which you can see on Mike's uh, documentary. And that's where we, we where I met Mike. And ever since, um, I've been trying to do some things, but I've been kind of tied to some things I needed to, uh, it's kind of a delicate issue with California Skywatch, and I've kind of broken away from that, which has allowed me now to uh, help coordinate maybe, you know, different uh, functions, like Mike wants to do some more uh, showings of his film, which I hope we get to do, but it's allowed me to then, like, hook up with Joy, because she also contributed footage to Mike's uh, uh, film, and just get out and, and, and talk to people what's going on in our atmosphere because we're seeing profound changes over a very short period of time here in Southern California, not just, you know, with the weather, but we're seeing the skies changing and we're seeing the plants are changing. We're seeing the same things that he documented in his, in his, in his film of what's going on in Northern California, the, 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 the effects of these compounds and, and so forth. Um, but uh, I, I'm now kind of uh, at, a, at a point where, yeah, it, it opening up new doors.